Just coming off the screen on the right side. 15th tie of the night. Two eighteen to play in overtime. Wheeler trying to take the opening. It's not there. The ball rolls. He scooped it up. Yeah, it was tipped. It was tipped. Mintz peaks at the clock. Drives in. Cut off. Mintz. Tough attempt. Offensive foul. Unless they get the contact underneath, and they may. And that is a big call because... Mintz is going to go to the free throw line. I love the way to Kentucky. Where are they going? They're going towards the basket. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Who, yeah, I think they call it on Banks. They did. Yeah, before. It yeah. was on the front side. Yeah, it didn't matter. Before that final contact. And it sends Mintz, a 72% free throw shooter, to the strike. 76-75 Kentucky. Mintz, a guy with a lot of experience. The numbers might not be as good as somebody else at the line, but he's very experienced. From Charlotte, North Carolina, transferred from Creighton. And he goes one out of two at the line, 76-75. Kentucky is one of six at the strike in OT. Under two minutes to play. Switch out front. Banks defended by Mintz. They have to go one-on-one -on -one against them. Oh, Stumbles. A yep, that's and a Mintz picks up the foul with 1.45 on the clock. And Banks is a 85% shooter. The shooter was over here at first, and they couldn't get it to him. And so that's when he had to decide to make a decision and go for it himself. That play was set up again for Eddard, but they had to switch Kentucky out front. 85% at the line. First free throw attempt of the night for Daryl Banks the third money substitution Ty Ty Washington in mints to the bench double bonus for both teams Banks is from Los Angeles but attended the Patrick School in Hillside New Jersey and he confidently yeah, that, connects that, on a pair that was very easy 77 76 St. Peter's Get it in for Washington. 2-2-1 two, two, action. Let's see what they settle back into. They back off of Wheeler with a minute 35 on the clock. And back into their matchup defense right now. That's to stop Wheeler from trying to get penetration, but they want to go over the top. Too high. Wheeler over the head of Shibwe. Unforced error. Calipari staring at Wheeler. I like the zone, though, because they're not allowing Wheeler to get his motor going towards the basket. We come up on one minute to play. Nadefo, one-on-one -on -one with Brooks. Hands it for Lee. Bounce, Nadefo. Oh, pretty, pretty. Gives it up, Drame with the deuce. And it's a three-point lead for St. Peter's. Kentucky on the ropes. Under a minute to go. Timeout, Wildcats. If that shot was taken from the left side, it was going to be smothered right here by Nadefo. He never caught it, but look at that recognition to find his teammate Treme on the right side. <laughs> Dance. 79 to 76 with 56.1 on the clock. How about the play of Doug Eddard, the junior from Nutley, New Jersey? Here he comes around the screen. You notice how the way he turns and gets his feet set in air? A lot of times guys will put the inside foot down to get balance and turn into your shot. He comes around and kind of does a high-flying two-step, getting himself ready to shoot it. That's a remarkable confidence in that shooter. Kim Holloway, the wife of Shaheen Holloway. St. Peter's fans, they are certainly not in the same category as yep. Kentucky in terms of numbers, but they've got a lead with 56.1 to play in overtime, 79 to 76. Probably back in the zone to force the action over the top. And that's what they're in right now. We're down to 48 seconds left in OT. Kentucky down by three. Brooks, drive, Brooks. 
Ooh, out of bounds. And St. Peter's feels very confident that they did not touch it last. Good drive to the basket, good hand on it. Uh, there was a poke, and it might yeah. have been Drame. Huge they, call here. Yeah, they called Kentucky ball, right? They did. Yeah. Call on the floor was Kentucky will retain possession. And you see the trajectory of the ball change after Drame tried to swipe at it. Another look. Brooks came up with all rim. The question was yeah. whether or not it rolled off yeah. Brooks on the way out of bounds. So it's the right arm of Drame there. Well, and it doesn't touch the defo out of bounds, so it that's doesn't. not a factor. I didn't think it hit Brooks. I didn't either. It just missed him. He was in an awkward position underneath the rim. And Gene Steratour watching these replays along with us. What'd you see, Gene? I see Drame's hand last, and I think it's really important, as you well noted, of what the calling the call on the court was prior to review. This is Kentucky's ball on the court in real time. You've got to have something indisputable to overturn that. To me, it appears Drame was the last to touch the ball with the right hand over Brooks's back. And I don't think there's anything there that would be conclusive enough to say that you would overturn that. I think Kentucky yeah. gets the basketball. I agree, Gene. And possibly just maybe a look at the clock to make sure they got that right because that ball's not dead until it hits the floor. Great point, Jimmy. 100% correct. So that ball comes off the bottom of the rim. And as the ball ricochets off of Drame, the question, did it graze the uh, finger wait a minute, that's of a Keon thumb. Brooks? That's a thumb. That sure is. Oh, boy. And Drame's hand is behind his hand. So that's a, there's no doubt the ball a, changes trajectory there, but it does appear to be the thumb of Keon Brooks Jr. on that yeah. close-up look. That's great camera work right there. Shaheen Holloway's got a big smile on his face. His team is up by three with 41.5 to go. And yes, take a look right there at the thumb. Yeah, they're getting that one. Yeah, it's it's the thumb, yeah, and it's, it's not thumb. even debatable now after we've seen that look. Yeah, I, I would think maybe they want to just make sure if if what we're seeing is what they're seeing, maybe there's the timing issue. More from Gene. You know, I think it's well, uh, to point out right now, guys. You know, many times we say, "Why are they going over there? What's taking them so long?" You know, they're stopping the flow of the game. We look at eight angles, and then on the ninth angle, yep. we see a thumb that touches a Kentucky player. That's the patience that's going through every angle that we can possibly get before we make a decision. And I believe what you said at the end of the day, that touches a right thumb and a great job by the officials. And they got it right. They did. They sure did. St. Peter's with a basketball leading 79 to 76. They got to go into a fouling mode pretty soon. Banks gets it across. Eddard. We're down to 32 seconds to play. Foul is called out near midcourt. And it's going to send. Darrell Banks to the free throw line. 85% shooter goes to the line. I think you make a judgment in the back court here if you're going to go for this fouling opportunity to extend the game. Definitely a hit out front. But I think Kentucky would have liked to see that occur about eight seconds sooner. 25 points. He is two of two at the line. It is now a two possession game, 80 to 76. Second one here for Darrell Banks, the third. 31.6 on the clock. See if, how fast Wheeler can get this ball up the floor. At least staying with him a little bit. Kentucky in big trouble. Yeah, if you get a layup out of it, go for it. But they're going to look. Taking a little time off the clock. St. Peter's up by five. Three. Oh. Good. Ty Ty Washington. A huge triple. Two point game. The key here is getting it up the court in a hurry. Now they get slowed down a little bit because of the switching on the zone, but that's some 
pull-up jumper for Washington straight on. He put it over Eddard. And a timeout taken with 21.6 left in overtime. St. Peter's 81, Kentucky 79. Anxious moments in Indianapolis for the number two seed in the East. St. Peter's with possession. Banks 85% shooter. Eddard 89% shooter. At least 72. Nadefo is not the guy you want to touch the basketball. And looks like Banks will be taking it out. Kentucky has gone one of six at the free throw line in he, overtime. He can run here too, Ian. That's important to get some angles if you need it as the entry pass. There you go. Good. There's the foul. Matthew Lee will head to the line. Junior from San Juan, Puerto Rico. 20 seconds to play. First time at the line tonight for Lee. There's still a ton of time in this game Kentucky has right now. Three-point lead. 82-79. Second attempt for Matthew Lee. Hits them both. St. Peter's up by four. 17 seconds left. Washington makes the move towards the rim. Shibwe looking to pass it off. Jumper, Grady, off the back of the iron. Edwards got it. And he's fouled by Mintz with 7.4 on the clock. Just an amazing effort just then defensively again. One of the things just then was Shibwe got the basketball eye and it's 18 feet away to take up a little more time. He wasn't going to shoot it from that spot, had to give it up. Big time rebound and a very, very good shooter at the line. Eddard will shoot a pair with 7.4 to play, 89%. St. Peter's up by four. He's built for this, this guy. No hesitation <laughs> and no question. St. Peter's in overtime, 8 of 10 at the free throw line. Kentucky, 1 of 6. He nails a pair. Wow. Seven seconds left. Wheeler gives it up. Brooks, the jumper. No good. You can feel the madness. St. Peter's pulls off the upset. The Peacocks are giant killers. They defeat Kentucky, 85 to 79. Cinderella lives in Indianapolis.